We broke the story about the Ladakh border brawl in the Galwan Valley in which 20 Indian Army personnel have been killed in action, including the commanding officer of the infantry unit there. And 24 hours after that big national exclusive news break, we bring to you visual evidence of that battle zone. It's called Ladakh's Mountain of Blood. And this is where 20 Indian men fought to the death. Many have sustained injuries, but these are the first images that shows you something much bigger that China had mobilized in a premeditated manner and the killing was planned in advance. Ladakh's new mountain of blood, that's what it's being called. As the body count piles up and India comes to terms with the brutal premeditated bloodletting by the Chinese army, India today now shows you the battle zone in cold, stupefying detail. Take a close look at these satellite images from Planet Labs. Photographs taken less than 24 hours after the carnage on the night of June the 15th, capturing in stunning detail the full truth. What you're looking at is the first visual detail of where the Indian and Chinese troops brawled to the death. What these images show is that despite being massively outnumbered by Chinese troops and losing at least 20 men, the Indian side is holding its ground. High-resolution satellite images of Ground Zero from June the 16th show a massive continuing build-up by the Chinese side despite the de-escalation agreement at the Lieutenant General level 10 days prior. These satellite images from Planet Labs, reviewed by India today, nail the flashpoint between the two sides. Ladakh's new Himalayan blood zone. And here's what we can tell you about these images. Take a close look at this image from the Galwan Valley, where it clearly shows Chinese troops outnumbering Indian troops. An intense Chinese build-up is seen from the China side. At least 200 military vehicles are seen on the ground on the Chinese side. This despite a clear promise to disengage. Well, despite being outnumbered by the Chinese troops and facing horrific casualties, the images prove that Indian troops are holding their position strongly. The Indian Army has officially confirmed at least 20 Indian casualties and several injured in what was a bloody and brutal medieval-style brawl. And these images establish and prove China's direct treachery. Less than 10 days after agreeing to disengage and de-escalate, these images from the Galwan Patrol Point 14 show that China intensified its troop build-ups amidst the de-escalation process. If you look closely, you can see that the Chinese troops are distributed in three parts. The forward part is followed by two trails directed towards the line of actual control. The image from Tuesday shows hundreds of military vehicles lining up on the Chinese side, as well as encampments distributed in the middle and backward parts of the Chinese trail. On Tuesday, India Today broke the biggest military story since Kargil. And now we bring you the first images of the battlefield and how China had no intentions to de-escalate. With Ankit Kumar in Delhi, Bureau Report, India Today. Uh, India Today's editor, uh, Ankit Kumar, who brought us these exclusive images long before anybody else is with us. Gaurav and Abhishek continue to be with me. Gaurav is uh, in Leh Ladakh, the only Indian, uh, in, only journalist to reach there, uh, you know, in light of what has happened in Galwan. But first, I want to go across to Lieutenant General Vinod Bhatia, former Director General Military Operations. General Bhatia, these images telling a very, very disturbing tale of premeditation, of pre-planning, and a total, uh, you know, lack of any intention by the Chinese, perhaps, General, you know, to disengage and de-escalate. Uh, Shiv, absolutely right. Uh, uh, I feel there has been a major shift uh, in what has happened in the northern borders, uh, the disputed or the unsettled borders, and now become contested borders with this. Uh, and the uh, treaty agreements and the protocols and the peace and tranquility has been shattered. Uh, we'll have to find new ways to now uh, uh, see how to manage the borders. The rules of engagement need to be changed. Uh, it has to be, we, the army has to be future ready. We'll have to build capabilities. Uh, we'll have to uh, build a relative position of strength from where to deal with China. Because the key issue would be now how to deter China's aggressive behavior. Uh, this is something which is unacceptable what has happened uh, on the 15th. Premeditated, as you put it, 
uh, it has been there. It is very sad that it has happened. Uh, it's happened after four decades. But now that it has happened, uh, we'll have to be prepared and see how do we position ourselves uh, out there? Uh, how do we change the rules of engagement out there? How do we deal with China at the at the military level, at the diplomatic level? And how do we create capabilities and defense preparedness? Mm. We should understand that peace comes from defense preparedness. Peace comes from being operational ready. Yes. Peace comes from being uh, absolutely prepared for everything. And if we want peace, we will have to invest uh, in armed forces. We have to ensure that armed forces are future ready. We have to see the challenges of the new age which are coming in, what China has been, the three warfare strategy. And what China has done out here uh, is, uh, for, uh, for us, uh, they've, they've tried to pressurize us uh, in a number of places. Uh, this uh, particular ongoing uh, uh, incursions and standoffs uh, are totally different from the earlier one in context. Yes. These are multiple in various places. These are more in depth, more in frequency. Uh, the, the, these are more in intensity. Uh, and they have not, after having agreed to disengage, they have not disengaged. These are changes which are coming in. And we'll have to now factor this in and how to deal uh, with China on the LEC uh, from tomorrow on. It's true. Everything has changed. We'll have to completely renew and overhaul how we deal with the Chinese. That is the words. Those are the words of a former Director General of Military Operations. It doesn't get more grave than that. Everything we know so far about how we deal with the Chinese lies in tatters or, you know, in the corners of South Block now. Everything needs to be completely reinvented. Ankit, you brought us these images. And, you know, if I'm not mistaken, what they basically prove is that starting from that handshake between the two lieutenant generals on June the 6th and 10 days later, China had absolutely no intention, Ankit, to disengage. Even while the generals were shaking hands, it looks like China had already made up its mind. Ye hum kuch nahi karenge, hum kuch bol denge is meeting mein, but we will continue to mobilize because that is our real intention. Well, if you go through the statement just released by India's Ministry of External Affairs, Shiv, regarding India's position on the incident, it actually confirms the story that we have been telling through these images on India today since morning. Uh, the high end of the story is the diplomatic screw job on part of China. Remember how it all began. Last week, the Chinese Foreign Ministry issued a statement that both India and China have uh, reached an agreement on properly handling the situation, and both sides were uh, taking actions in line with this agreement. Now, these images suggest that China actually used this time to build up its troops yes. in guise of the de-escalation. At the same time, India was actually following the, uh, the disengagement process. The second point that is important here is Shiv, that, and what we must tell our viewers is that these images also show that despite being outnumbered, despite being all the odds against, um, against them, the Indian Army unit held its, its position uh, on June 15th. What these images confirm that no Indian Army has not backed down from its earlier held position. Uh, thing about these high resolution images is that you can actually count the number of vehicles, etc. Hmm. If you start counting these vehicles, you can easily count as much as 200 uh, odd military vehicles on part of China. When it comes to India, you can barely count um, less than 100 vehicles. So this gives you a sense of how much disproportionate uh, disadvantage Indi Indian troops had on June 15. Okay, very interesting. Uh, Gaurav, uh, you know, these pictures also show that the Indian side was vastly outnumbered but the big takeaway for us also from these images that Ankit has procured from Planet Labs is that the Indian Army is holding ground very, very strongly. 16 Bihar and the other units are holding on to their positions there no matter what the situation. Absolutely, Shiv. Outnumbered, outgunned, deceit and yet India not only held ground, India pushed the Chinese back uh, at this location and look at how numbers stack up. Ankit's images show that the Chinese have 200 vehicles there. Now, as uh, General Bhatia will tell us, 200 vehicles would indicate that these are per battalion about 50 to 60 vehicles. So 63 is a 180, which means three battalions plus, which means they have a brigade plus in that area. That's point one. Point two, if we have about 100 vehicles, we have two battalions minus uh, and you and I both know that apart from 16 Bihar, uh, we also had a, had a medium RT regiment there. Yes. Incidentally, that indicates India's preparedness with your medium RT deployed there. And that is why the Chinese are hoping to browbeat India and not get into conflict. Because should push comes to shove, come to shove, 
the Chinese will be at a disadvantage and not just here. General Bhatia will bear me out at multiple locations along the line of actual control. The Chinese would be at a disadvantage and that is where our battle-hardened soldiers, the Chinese have also acknowledged, much better in high-altitude warfare with great experience from the Siachen Glacier on one side here. They can take on Chinese anytime and protect the sanctity of their LAC. General Bhatia, you want to add to that? The Indian Army definitely holding position, but must be prepared for further provocations from the Chinese. Maybe in other places in Ladakh, possibly in other parts of the line of actual control, central or eastern sector as well. Uh, Shiv, absolutely right. We have to prepare it every inch on the 3, 4, 8, 8 kilometers of the uh, of the Indochina border. It is not one place alone. Uh, we are already deployed out there. We have uh, proper defenses and China knows that and we know it. We have our strength. But let me also say that we have weaknesses uh, compared to China. We, we Our infrastructure is not as good as theirs. They've got mm. better infrastructure. Yeah. Uh, but the what fact remains that Indian Army is a professional army. We have the combat experience. We have the high altitude experiences. Whereas we are deployed, uh, the PLA stays uh, well beyond. They've invested in the three yards, the road, rather reserve as I call it. Uh, they have the surveillance, they have the roads, and they have the habitat out there. They come and they do their job and they go back. Where we come and stay at high altitude, we are conditioned out there. Uh, we carry load on our backs, we yes. lead from the front. So th th these are the things which the uh, PLA has to see and not be here. And uh, Indian army out there, which is there, will defend each and every inch of the territory which is integral to India. Territorial integrity is not negotiable. Okay. That everyone has to realize that. Okay. Abhishek Bhalla, defense editor, also with us. Abhishek, uh, the chief of the army staff has saluted the army heroes. This must be an extremely difficult time for the army, but grit, determination and resolve obviously there. Uh, what can you tell us about the army's plans right now? Major general level talks happening at patrol point 14. Uh, are there any plans afoot, uh, Abhishek, for the army chief to visit Ladakh? Uh, Shiv, divisional uh, commander level talks have uh, taken place once again all day. That means uh, two uh, major generals from the two armies uh, have been discussing uh, things uh, through the day. Uh, what I was told is, uh, you know, the key agenda is uh, that the fact that uh, uh, both armies, uh, especially the top commanders, don't want another flare-up because uh, things are extremely volatile on the ground. Nothing really has changed. This There was supposed to be a disengagement plan uh, between uh, the two armies, uh, but it's all fallen apart for the, two, uh, for, for, for the moment uh, shift because uh, nothing has gone uh, according to that uh, blueprint that was prepared, hoping that there will be uh, a pull uh, pullback, not just of the troops, but also of the armor as well as artillery that was brought close to the line of actual control. I was told that as part of uh, this disengagement, uh, both the armies uh, uh, had decided to move back at least three to four kilometers. Uh, but uh, for some reason, uh, China did not adhere uh, to what was discussed. And uh, it seems that uh, somewhere, you know, there is a trust deficit now. And it's extremely difficult for things to be uh, back to normal. Uh, but as far as uh, both the armies are concerned, at least the top leadership hoping that there isn't a further military escalation to an to a already extremely volatile situation. Abhishek Gaurav, thank you very much for that. General Bhatia as well, thank you for joining me on this breaking story. We're continuing to get imagery from Ladakh. We, we will continue to play those for our viewers. Uh, updates are plenty and they're happening every single minute. One of the biggest questions on everyone's mind is what about the casualties on the Chinese side? While India is confirmed to have lost 20 army men in the border brawl. China too has suffered a big blow, except we don't know those numbers categorically. Sources have told various agencies that the commanding officer of the Chinese unit which attacked the Indian side was also killed in the Indian retaliation. Uh, and I personally, I Shiva Roor, have also got that confirmation from my sources. But once again, I take care to say there is no categorical word on it from the Chinese side or the Indian side. The number of Chinese soldiers evacuated in stretchers, ambulances and helicopters show that the Chinese casualties may go much beyond the estimated number. Things have stretched wildly between 5 to 40, but let me be very clear here on India today, there is no confirmation or categorical word on what those numbers may be. It could be as high as 11 to 15 as well.
Indian forces continue to be on alert across the line of actual control a day after the border bloodbath. Sources in the army have asserted that nothing has changed on the ground and it calls for ground action amidst this very volatile situation. Meanwhile, earlier in the day, Defence Minister chaired a meeting with the Chief of Defence Staff and the three service chiefs to take stock of a hugely evolving situation. Meanwhile, after the provocation, China tried to pin blame on India. Spokesperson for the Chinese Foreign Ministry even laid claim to the Galwan Valley. That's what's changed, saying the area belongs to China and the clash happened on the Chinese side of the line of actual control. The sovereignty of the Galwan Valley area has always belonged to China. The Indian border troops flip-flopped and seriously violated our on bilateral protocols on border related issues and the consensus of our commander level talks regarding these matters in the Galvan Valley area. We have we are having communication through diplomatic and military channels and the right and wrong of this is very clear. This incident happened at the Chinese side of the line of actual control and China is not to blame for this. India today has also accessed the exact location of the spot in the Galwan Valley, a lonely Himalayan ridge where the bloodletting took place on Monday night. This is where Indian and Chinese troops fought a death battle. This image accessed via Google Earth is for the first time where we're showing you the precise location of where this bloodbath actually took place. And take a look at this picture, ladies and gentlemen. That is the ridge where the fighting took place, a steep ridge line near the mouth of the Galwan River. One of the ridges overlooks the fast-flowing Galwan River below. This was the spot where soldiers from both sides fought a death battle. Several Indian and Chinese soldiers were injured in the scuffle on this narrow ridge line. Many fell it from the steep ridge probably injuring or dying on the cliff face before falling into the river 200 meters down. China has admitted to casualties on its side, but has refused to give out any numbers so far, leading to speculation that the numbers may be embarrassingly high on their side. Hello everyone, this is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.